Well, British prosecutor Sir David Maxwell Fife reads now from count two, which is going to be handled by his country's prosecution team. The defendants are charged with crimes against peace or waging aggressive war in violation of law and treaties. It's worthy to note that the United States, in its push for this trial, primarily wanted to create new international law that would outlaw such behavior. This count was the primary thrust of the trial, though not the one that was remembered. All the defendants, with diverse other persons, during a period of years preceding 8 May 1945, participated in the planning, preparation, initiation, and waging of wars of aggression, which were also wars in violation of international treaties, agreements, and assurances. Section 6, particulars of the wars planned, prepared, initiated, and waged. A, the wars referred to in the statement of offense in this count two of the indictment and the dates of their initiation were the following. Against Poland, 1st September 1939. Against the United Kingdom and France, 3rd September 1939. Against Denmark and Norway, 9th April 1940. Against Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg, 10th May 1940. Against Yugoslavia and Greece, 6th April 1941. Against the USSR, 22nd June 1941. And against the United States of America, 11th December 1941. B. Reference is hereby made to count one of the indictment for the allegations charging that these wars were wars of aggression on the part of the defense in favor of the principal allied and associated powers all rights and title over the territories included between the Baltic, the northeastern frontier of East Prussia as defined in Article 28 of Part 2, Boundaries of Germany of the present treaty and the former frontier between Germany and Russia. Germany undertakes to accept the settlement made by the principal allied and associated powers in regard to these territories, particularly in so far as concerns the nationality of inhabitants. Transfer Commissioner for the Memo Territory, Gauleiter and Oberpräsident Eric Koch, effected on 3rd April 1939 during a conference at Memo, the final incorporation of the late Memo territory into the National, National Socialist Party Gau of East Prussia and into the state administration of the East Prussian Regierungsbezirk of Grand Binin. The text of the agreement between the Führer and Reichs the Chancellor Adolf Hitler and the President of the Czechoslovak State, Dr. Hasha. The Fuhrer and Reich Chancellor today received in Berlin, at their own request, the President of the Czechoslovak State. The Chief Prosecutors for the United States and Great Britain wish, with the permission of the Tribunal, to make four points perfectly clear. One, the object of this part of the case is to collect for the benefit first of the members of the tribunal and secondly for the defense counsel concerned the evidence against each defendant under counts one and two which has been presented by the American and British delegation. Otherwise, it would be easy, among the many documents already before the court, to miss relevant pieces of evidence which the tribunal might wish to consider and to which the defendants may wish to make a reply. This does not mean 
that the case against these defendants has in any way ended. Vital and important parts of the case remain concerning the actual atrocities, both war crimes and crimes against humanity. The evidence in regard to these will shortly <coughs> be presented by the French delegation and the delegation of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And when the massive documentation of these crimes is placed before the court, the French and Soviet delegations will have the opportunity of relating them to the individual defendants in the dock. It has been the desire of all the chief prosecutors to delimit as clearly as possible the evidence under the respective counts of the indictment. The documents in evidence, however, were not written with a view to this trial, and therefore many of them <coughs> inevitably deal with offences under more than one count. It is by reason of this alone that some overlapping and repetition necessarily exist. Similarly, it may occur that as the French and Soviet cases are developed, documents may come to light which bear on the common plan or the initiation of wars of aggression or on other material connected with counts one and two. The American and British delegations will welcome any addition to the evidence on these parts of the case which such documents may provide and gladly receive such reinforcement from their French and Soviet colleagues.